If you have just started streaming or are looking for an alternative for the Elgato Stream Deck, this guide will help you build your own for a fraction of the price. This video is based on a guide I did find online. I have it linked in the description below. The printed files for the enclosure are included with the guide. However, if you wish to design your own enclosure or wish to use another enclosure, the steps that I cover in this video will apply to that as well. So the first part of assembly will be installing your keys into the front faceplate of the enclosure. In this case, I used Cherry MX Clears. However, any Cherry style switch that snaps into position can be used. After installing the key switches, you will flip your front face plate over and then we are going to tin the pins on the back of the switches with your soldering iron and some solder. And then I have gone and pre-made some short sections of wire here that we will use to connect for the grounds and you're going to tin the ends of those as well. With your wire being tinned as well as the pins on the back of the switches, simply holding the wire next to the pin and applying heat from your soldering iron will fuse them together. And then we will go through and you are connecting one pin on each switch together. This way they have a common ground line. And then after I went through and just applied a little bit more solder to ensure each wire had a firm connection. Now at this point, I prepped my Pro Micro by installing the 90 degree header. However, uh, I do advise that you do not do soldering at two in the morning. As you can see, I did install this backwards. So a simple fix to the case with some snips and I was still okay. However, when you do do this yourself, ensure that you install this correctly. The black spacer plastic pieces should be sitting firmly against the PCB. And the reason I installed the Pro Micro first was I wanted to get an idea of how to do my wire routing and which way the wire should come. So I do have some wires here. These are for connecting the switches to the Pro Micro. Again, pre-tin the leads of the wire. And using the same step as a ground wire, we will solder the wires to the back of the Cherry MX switches. After soldering the wires on, trim to length, and then crimp on connectors. Now, if you do not already have uh, a crimper and a set of DuPont connectors, you can also alternatively solder the wires directly to the Pro Micro itself. However, I do like using headers in case I ever have to take this apart or wish to reuse the Pro Micro for another project. When attaching the wires, ensure that the ground is connected to the ground and all the other wires are connected to the proper pinouts on the Pro Micro. I use double-sided tape to attach the Pro Micro to the bottom of the enclosure. And then when installing the top, ensure you do not pinch any of the wires. And two M3 screws hold it in place. Uh, I just used some short ones that I had on hand. And then for keys, you do have several choices. You can purchase pre-made keys, or in my case here, I printed some out. And then these ones I did replace with some printed ones that have some symbols on them. Okay, so once our Stream Deck is built, we will need to program the little Arduino chip in it. So after connecting it to your computer, you will need to go to the arduino.cc website, uh, go to software, downloads, and follow for whatever operating system you are running. You need to install the Arduino library to your computer. And then once that is installed, open it up. You'll see some example code here. You can just delete that. And next we will need to go to partsnotincluded.com. 
I'll have this link below. And Dave Madison here, who designed uh, and wrote the instructions that I have based this guide off of, um, did a nice little write up on how to build one of these. And he also provided the code that you will need to install to your Pro Micro to have your Stream Deck run. So first we're gonna copy the code, load up the Arduino, paste the code in, and then you'll go to tools. You'll need to ensure that the board selected is Arduino Leonardo, and your port is the correct port that your Stream Deck is plugged into. So once that is done, click the upload, uh, simply save that. This will verify your code, compile it, and update it to the Arduino. And there we go. So now the code is installed. We open up OBS, and go to settings, go to your hotkeys, and this will allow you to assign actions to your Stream Deck. So what the code did is essentially add extra F or function keys to your keyboard. A normal keyboard ends at F12. This adds F13 and up. So we'll go through here and we'll just assign uh, some keys to some actions. So camera one, camera two, scene one, scene two. Uh, we'll go with mic mute, mic unmute. And then there's two other keys that you can assign to whatever. So we'll just go with those for now. Hit apply. And that's it. So now we have camera one, camera two, scene one, scene two, unmute microphone. Camera one, camera two, scene one, camera one, camera two. So that is how you build, assemble, and program your own do-it-yourself stream deck. Thank you for watching this video. As someone who has recently started streaming, when I came across this project, I thought this would be a fun little thing to do. Looking back, there are some things that can be done to suit personal preference. The Arduino Pro Micro does support adding more keys, so if you do wish to make a bigger one, that is something you can do. You do not have to use Cherry MX switches. Uh, depending on the design you wish to do, you can use smaller switches, larger switches, whatever you decide. It just has to be a switch. And then with it being Arduino and open to more programming, one thing that I may be interested in doing in the future is actually adding one of these small OLED screens to it. Compared to the Stream Deck, one thing this lacks is some sort of feedback for when you are pushing the buttons. The Stream Deck has little screens on each key. This obviously does not. However, simply adding a small screen somewhere that gives you some feedback about what button you recently pushed or what was the last button pushed would be helpful for the feedback itself. This project was done with some very simple tools. We use a wire stripper, soldering iron, some crimping. Again, you do not need to crimp the connectors. If you do not have a crimper, you can simply solder. So all in all, cost-wise, I believe this was well under $20. Uh, there was some printed plastic involved. The Cherry MX switches I did get off DigiKey. However, you could spring for some cheap ones on AliExpress. Same with the Pro Micro. I believe I got this for around a dollar on AliExpress. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you would like to see more projects that I am working on, don't forget to subscribe. Be safe out there, wash your hands, and have a great day.